Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. I hope this isn't my last video before I uh, take a break for the rest of the year because of my surgery, I'm getting a knee replacement done. But let's take a look at what we're talking about the Oriac. Oriac. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. I'm not French. I took French in school because I'm a Canadian, but whew, it went over my head mostly. Uh, this is made by Le Sabot, which is a company in France that has, what, 20 odd employees and they hand make their knives. Uh, they use Sandvik 12C27 as their main steel that they use for knives, and that's what this knife has. They have some higher end ones as well. Uh, this knife comes in at least four different handle materials. This one's Juniper, which is their most expensive one. You can also get it in horn from, I think, a bull horn or a cow horn. And you can get it in olive, and you can get it in broom wood. The store that I bought this from, knivesinfrance.com, they sold out of these Juniper ones after I did my unboxing video. I don't know if those two things are related or not, I like to think so, but maybe they aren't. He's got some more coming with their broomwood. Now, broomwood is another sort of a shrub-like tree that uh, grows in Europe, the southern and, you know, the northern coast of the Mediterranean, uh, you know, through Spain and a little, a few other areas. Uh, and uh, that should be a little bit less than this. This one was 56 US dollars in the United States of America. I've got links for stores in Europe, uh, Germany, Messer and Co, and some stores in France and stuff if you're in Europe or think or other places and you want to buy this. But if you're in North America or anywhere in the, Amer in the Americas, I guess, knivesoffrance.com is a great place to get one of these knives. It's a traditional slip joint, and I'm going to tell you all about it. All right, here it is. Now, this knife was originally designed and started to be made a little over a hundred years ago. It's not one of the super old French knives, but it's an old French knife. And it was a design that was used a lot by cattle ranchers in France, or farmers, whatever you want to call them in France. Here in Alberta, Canada, we call them ranchers. And I live in ranch country. I'm just at the edge of the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, and there's a lot of ranches in those places. And I can see how this knife would be quite useful. We've got a blade shape with a drop point here. Not a lot of belly, but a bit of belly. So a long, fairly straight edge. A nail neck there because it is a liner. It's a <laughs> slip joint knife. I was going to call it a liner lock. It's not a liner lock at all. It's a slip joint knife. The uh, brand name and the knife name are on here. So that's Odiac, A-U-R-L, A-U-R-I-L-L-A-C. That's the name of this specific style. The company Le Sabot makes this knife, like I said, in four different handle materials. I think they have some handle materials that are custom just to certain vendors, you know, a lot like any other modern brand names do. But this knife design, the Odiac, it's made by multiple brands because it's not a brand specific style. It's a traditional French knife. So you can find it from other brands. Make sure you check what steel it is. Le Sabot uses a lot of 12C27. It says right there on the Ricasso that it's made in France. Well, it just says France. And on this side, let's move it this way a little bit so you can see it. It says 12C27 Sandvik. That's all the writing you're going to find on this knife. On the handle, you don't find anything. Now, I really wish that they would upgrade their styling and put this information here on their bolster instead of on the bevel. I don't like stuff on the bevels all that much. It's not a really big deal, but there you go. But I looked through a lot of French knives recently, and it's very, very popular to put the information on the bevel right there, uh, no matter what the blade is. So I seriously doubt one little bloke from Canada is going to make French uh, companies change the way they make knives. I'm under no illusions that way. So we've got a slip joint. So here's a back spring. We've got two liners of steel. Are you okay, Bandit? There, he just climbed up on my bed. 
two liners of steel. They end in bolsters on the end here and they come straight to the back. So that spring, you'll watch it right here, it'll come out when I go to close the knife because the way the blade tang is shaped, that spring pushes down and holds the blade in the open position. This has got a strong back spring. You won't easily you know, close the knife on your hand. It takes a fair bit of pressure to overcome it. It doesn't have a super distinct half stop, but it's effectively got a half stop right there. And then you get your fingers away from that edge and you close the knife. Now you don't do what I did in my unboxing video where I just pushed it and let the spring slam it down. And that's because they don't make the knives quite the way I would like them to make it. There is a bit of a stop and you can see a spot on the inside, the, the back side of the spring on the inside. It does strike the ricasso right here, but the way they've made this, the metal goes straight along here and then it bumps up right about here where my fingernail is and then it comes back straight and then scoops up to the end. So there's a bump right there so that when you close the knife too hard, you're going to flatten the blade fairly much underneath this nail neck and you're just going to flatten that edge. And when you've got a flattened edge, it's not going to cut very well. So you need to be careful when you close your knives because this is made the traditional way. The handle scales are getting dirty and that's because they don't finish their wood. It's just raw wood. So once I'm done this video, I'm going to lightly sand it with some really high grit, clean it up really nice, and I'm going to put a finish on this wood. I'll be keeping this knife. This won't be a knife that a, uh, somebody could win from the channel. We've got three pins holding them on, and so it's a permanent construction. Of course, there are ways to take them off, and you have to use new pins then and put new handle scales on, but you know the knives can come apart. There is also a pin straight through here, but you can't see it because they use the same type of stainless steel as the bolster. They pinned it through and that's where it pivots on. And then when you sand it, you know, it just nicely hides where that pin is. The handle shape, it's a straight back. And then we've got on the bottom side of the handle, a little bit of a belly and then a, a recurve in the handle and then a big bump. This is the widest point. This distance is greater here than it is here. Not by much though. And it's just rounded on the end. So that's pretty much how this knife is made. Are there any flaws or things about it that I don't like? Well, the plunge is really quick, which mean, I mean, it doesn't slowly slope down. It's pretty much a step down. So it doesn't have a sharpness toil. It doesn't really need a sharpness toil. I think it'd still prefer one. But when you've got a quick plunge, you can sharpen right to the end more easily without making a big mess of things back here on a guided sharpening system. So that's okay. What I did find odd was starting just past the A here and then up to about where my thumbnail is right now, they sanded off the side. I'm guessing there was some little kind of imperfection or something up there and you know, they're doing this on a probably a belt that's moving really quickly and they took a big chamfer on that side right there but this side here it's close to a 90 degree you know transition slightly smoothed out so it's not sharp up here at all so that's odd right there not a problem it gives it a little bit of character it certainly gives it that handmade kind of character and I'm not looking for perfection in a knife like this. I'm looking for history and there's a lot of history in this knife. You can see some you know little lines where they were grinding a little bit here and it's not perfectly cleaned up. Again that's because they're handmade and they're making them quickly enough to be able to sell them for $56 US. I didn't find any store in Canada that has these like I said, Messer & Co. has these for 48 euros. Uh, there's another store called sabatier-k.com. They sell it for 44 euros. and No, 50 euros, 44 British pounds. 
So of course, you know, slip joint like this is totally legal in most countries. Let's go over all the sizes and dimensions now. We'll put this Stanley Fat Max Mini on the screen as we do this. Like I said, it's Sandvik 12C27. That's got a Rockwell usually around 57. So it's not that hard to sharpen in the field if you need to resharpen it. And certainly at home, it doesn't hold an edge in an extremely long time, but it's quite corrosion resistant and it's a decent budget steel. I quite like it. The weight of this knife is 80 grams. That's 2.8 ounces. So it's not a heavy knife. The factory sharpness, I measured it in three places and averaged it 105 best. That's better than the average knife that I review. The length of the cutting edge, 84.3 millimeters, 3.32 inches. Blade length tip to the bolster here, 87.6 millimeters, 3.45 inches. The thickness of the blade, and I'm measuring it up here at the Ricasso. 2.92 millimeters, which is 0.115 of an inch. So they started with three millimeter thick stock, I'm sure. The blade depth, that's this measurement. The widest point this way is 19 millimeters, 0.748, so three quarters of an inch. How thick is it behind the grind? Again, I measured it, well, this time in two places, and it's 0.37 millimeters, 14 and a half thousandths of an inch. That's one of the reasons why it slices so very well. And then the grind angles. I lost my sheet of paper where I had written down the grind angles. I think it got into the stack of papers that go into a shredder, but I can say it was very near 18 degrees per side with not much variability, less than a degree of variability along the length of the edges. So they do sharpen them quite well. The handle length is 107.3 millimeters, 4.23 inches. The grip area, it's around 10 centimeters or four inches. So this knife is good for really big hands. My hands are in the extra large range and very comfortable. The handle thickness, some people might find this odd. 17 and a half millimeters, 0.689 of an inch. So almost 0.7 of an inch. It's not a problem at all because it's less this way. It's actually very comfortable. It's easy to index this knife in your hand and you know exactly which way the blade's facing because of this long flat back for your thumb to sit on. The handle depth, that's this measurement, like I said, it's biggest up here, 16.1 millimeters, 0.634 of an inch. When the knife is closed, I gotta do it carefully, it's largest over here, and that is 26.3 millimeters, 1.037 of an inch. And the total length of this knife, oh, I did it again, 194.9 millimeters. So basically 195 millimeters, which is right around seven and five eighths. I quite like the shape, the weight, the dimensions of this knife. I would like things like a bit of a cleaner half stop. I would like that instead of putting the, you know, upswell right here to stop the blade, that they would stop the blade on the base of the blade here so that you wouldn't risk snapping your cutting edge on there. The tip of the edge, the blade, if you use your thumbnail and get it in there, you can catch your thumbnail on the tip of the blade. If I had little kids in the house, I would probably take this knife and I would just grind that down a little bit more so that the tip would be brought back another millimeter or yeah, maybe even just one millimeter. And then that would tuck the tip in here so that you couldn't get little fingers in there to get little nicks on them. Very tiny fitting. It's not a big deal at all. What do I think of this knife? I am very fond of this knife. And I didn't say it in the intro. If you shop at knivesoffrance.com with dashes between the words, you can get a discount code. I think it's 12% if my memory serves or 10%. Anyway, I got a discount code for when you shop there. As long as you spend at least 50 US dollars, they've got the emblematic duk duk. If you want to buy a, a very lower priced knife, and then they've got higher priced knives 
And they've got a lot of knives from this Le Sabot company, which uh, I feel like they make some pretty good stuff. If uh, you can make this in France, where they have good labor laws, where the people who are doing the work get good uh, vacation times, they get good benefits, and well, I'm just assuming that this specific factory does as well. France as a whole is a good spot to be a, an employee. And so if they can respect their employees and still make a knife that costs $56 in the United States, you know, this is a good budget knife. I really quite like it. Let's go over my notes here. It's got an old school back spring. It's handmade the old way. There's decent fitment. The tolerances are quite nice. You don't see lots of spaces back here. And you don't feel ridges when you're pushing across the side. Some knives, you know, you push across this way and you, you get your finger caught because it's got sharp edges. None of that here. The wood fits nice up to the bolster on here and here, which is quite nice. The blade, the fitment back here is good. The edge is sharp. Uh, it's a good edge for a lot of work. Good for detailed work if you need to. It's a long blade. Quite useful for many, many different things. Like I said, this really quick plunge mostly negates my desire for a sharpness toil, but uh, it's not bad at all. I don't mind it. It's got nice badging on the Ricasso. You can read it. The 12C27 Sandvik in the France. That's quite nice. It does rub on there a little bit, and you're going to get scratch marks eventually. And you can see a little bit of scratch marks already. That's just how these knives work, because it's an old-school style knife. What are the cons? I don't like that strike area. I've already mentioned that once, so that it strikes on the blade if you close it too hard. So just close it gently, and you'll be fine. If you want a knife with a guard in case you plunge it into things, first, don't get a slip joint knife. Although you can use this for plunging, just if you're plunging into something, make sure you're also going that way to some degree. And that keeps you from having the knife blade close on you. And I do wish that if they had to do this to touch up the blade here, I wish they would have done the same thing on the other side just to make it look intentional instead of, you know, just something that's only on one of the blades. One of the edges, one of the edges of the spine. It's quite nice. I'm very happy with this purchase. I purchased this from uh, knivesoffrance.com and um, they did give me a discount on this knife. So you can make that, uh, you can think of that whatever you want. I'm committed to going over the same standards of my reviews no matter how I got the knives. If you're looking for a French-made knife, if you want to maybe get into some traditional knives, but you're living in the United States and you don't want to ship stuff over across the Atlantic because that can get expensive, especially these days, consider shopping at knivesoffrance.com. And if you're from some other place, look down at my links. Maybe there's a store there for you. Thanks for watching my review of the Odiac. Thanks for uh, liking oh, Le Sabo, by the way, for those of you who are wondering. Uh, means, you know, the shoe, sort of. That's why you've got a symbol of a shoe there, an old wooden shoe style. Thanks, my friends, for watching. Hopefully I get another video before my surgery, but if we don't, I appreciate your support. And if you're a Patreon supporter or you're a YouTube member supporter, there will be some prizes and stuff for December, even though I won't be making videos. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.